In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a very good junk defense that I kind of like to run once in a while, and that is the triangle and two. So let's get down, let's check it out. So in the triangle and two, you're going to have three players essentially in a triangle on the court. You're going to have one player who's going to be guarding the point, and he will generally guard within the three-point line from the free throw line extended and above. Player 5 will then of course be guarding this entire space and same as player 4. However, with these two players we do not really want them to stretch too far out to the perimeter because now we're leaving of course a whole side open. I'm going to give you a little bit of an example here. So for example, with just the triangle players, if the ball goes over here that's player 1 moving over and then we would have player 5 moving over and player 4 protecting the paint for any drives or cuts down the middle. If the ball is on this side, same idea, just on the literally opposite side. If the ball is down here, the players are going to be generally in the same spots. We don't want anything to go into the high post, and we don't want anything to go into the low post. We generally have these players here to literally protect the key. We don't want anything there. But now you're probably wondering, well, what about those two extra players? Well, there's actually two ways that you can run this. So, for example, if there's two really good players, let's say this guy's a scoring threat and that guy's a scoring threat, and the rest of these other three players are not necessarily scoring threats, you can play it so that now you're always going to have two players in man-to-man -man defense and staying with those two players the entire time. So for example, if player one's up top, and that is also player one spot, he is now getting double teamed because he is in that zone of that player. If the ball goes passing over here, you're going to then still see the players move in the in their triangle zone over however these two players are going to be sticking s extremely tightly together so that they do not lose their man if there's a screen between these two players depending on the size and height difference you can switch automatically or you can say i need you guys to fight through to stay with your man and no matter where these players go on the court their defender goes with them no matter where they go. The Toronto Raptors used this zone as well as a box and one against the Golden State Warriors and the Raptors won the NBA championship. While this is a junk defense and very rarely works at the youth levels, it's actually quite common to work and it just may work for me this weekend when we play against a very good team. Which leads me into my next point. And that is, if they have a postman who is extremely, extremely amazing, and my team has multiple big guys who can guard multiple positions, you can have their big guy, especially if they're running a four-out style offense, which generally does happen if you've got a big guy, you literally have three players around him now so that he can't score, can't get the ball, and can't do anything on the court. This is how you would play it. With a postman, you would have a guy in front and a guy behind. The other guy in that zone would be there as help and support. That big man is not doing anything. Of course, there are other threats. This team that we're playing has a player who can drive and a player who can shoot. You can play man-to-man -man defense in this situation, but if you've got an overpowering big guy, you may want to try this zone. Because at the youth level, generally speaking, it's a very low percentage shot from the three-point line, and they generally get pressured very easily, so if you can run out on the shooter, if there's one shooter and one player who drives, let this guy shoot, let the shooter drive. Do the opposite of what they want. And this is a fantastic strategy if you're going up against a team that just has that one super tall player. We've all seen those teams where you may be coaching a grade 7 team and there just so happens to be a massive giant on the other team who has a 6 foot 5 guy or a 6 foot 4 guy who may weigh about 200 and something pounds. He grew way earlier than everybody else. And now he's the superstar because he's massive. I was there. I was six feet tall in grade six. Guess what? There's always going to be multiple players or sometimes multiple teams that have one player that just seems just so massive and unguardable to stop. You can run a zone like this, a zone, I'm going to call it a junk defense like this, 
where you can run it for two minutes and see if it works. And if it works, you can continue to run it until it stops working. You don't have to stay in the same defense throughout the entire game. I would actually suggest going against that and maybe change things up a bit between zones and mans. Personally, I prefer my unbeatable basketball defense, which is down in the description below, and man-to-man -man defense and going between those two. However, I like to also sometimes throw in junk defenses just to throw a team off because if they're going overly powered with one player, guess what? we can throw it off. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. I hope that this video has kind of explained the triangle in two much better. And if it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.